The real test of understanding the laws of indices is to be able to figure out what each of these would be equal to without using a calculator. Now you need to be ready for that exam not being able to use a calculator and so it's good practice to break these problems down into stages as required. So I'm going to go through these examples. This first one, 4 to the power of minus a half. Usually I deal with the negative index first, with the negative sign. So 4 to the power of minus a half would be 1 over 4 to the half. That minus sign means 1 over. Now the 4 to the half, the half means square root. So that's 1 over the square root of 4, which will be 1 over 2. So the first one simplifies to 2. We've then got number 2. 2 to the 3 divided by 2 to the minus 1. So using the second law of indices that I showed you in the previous video, because the base number is the same, the 2, then that means that we have 2 to the power of 3 take away the minus 1. So 2 to the power of 3 take away minus 1. So that's 2 to the power of 4. So 2 to the power of 4, 2, 4, 8, 16. Number 3. We have 5 to the minus 1 times 6 to the power of 0. Now 6 to the power of 0, any number to the power of 0 is 1. So this is the same as 5 to the power of minus 1 times 1. So just 5 to the power of minus 1. Now that negative sign means 1 over, so this is 1 over 5. Number 4, we have 32 to the power of 3 fifths. Now... In these types of problems, break it down into either doing the one-fifth first or the cube first. Usually, doing the fraction first is the best way to go. So I'm going to write that as 32 to the power of a fifth to the power of three. Because three times one-fifth makes the three-fifths. So you can split the fraction apart like that. So we need to find the fifth root of 32 and then put that to the power of 3. So the fifth root of 32 is actually 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that's 2 cubed. So 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Then we've got 4 to the power of 4 times 4 to the power of minus 2. So using the first law of indices that I showed you in the previous video, that's 4 to the power of 4 plus minus 2. Because we're multiplying and the base numbers are the same, we can add the indices. 4 plus minus 2 is 2. So that's 4 squared, so that's 16. Then finally we've got number 6. 1 ninth to the power of minus a half. So as before, um, I'm going to deal with the negative sign first. So this means... 1 over 1 ninth to the power of a half. So 1 ninth to the power of a half, so that's a square root of 1 ninth. So when you're square rooting a fraction, so the square root of A over B is the same as the square root of A over the square root of B. You can square root the numerator and the denominator individually. So the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 9 is 3. So this is 1 over 1 third. Now, if you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So 1 over 1 third is 1 times 3 over 1, which is just 3. So, that is those six examples, and they used a multitude of laws of indices. So, make sure you understand how it worked at each step, and so that you could replicate it in an exam situation.